Welcome back! I'm Tyler, you're watching the channel with my fracking name on it, and welcome to Alternative Fashion Dating Advice, a basic guide that will hopefully get you to raise your rock bottom standards. All the tips I'm about to list can be used both in Lolita and other alt fashions, and given that I know that most people interested in looks off the beaten path have the attention span of a concussed chinchilla, let's get right into the meat of it with rule number one. Whoever you're dating, at least try to make sure that he's not stupid. I'm using he because this is the gender most likely to commit atrocities of the interpersonal romantic variety, and if he is going to be stupid, he at least must be fun to look at. We're talking rippling abs, funny little hats, something to make up for lack of intellect, unless you found yourself a himbo, in which case you should ride your nearly sentient eggplant into the sunset. Mind you, to be a himbo, he must be good to you, and I feel like this is a perfect transition point to look at rule number two, they must be good at providing comfort. To use my high school boyfriend as an example, I was having a rough self-esteem day and he responded with, even if everyone else thinks you're ugly, I still think you're pretty. This was not a comforting thing to say. I stayed with him for three years. This was a dumb decision. To cut the shtick for a moment, if everything in the relationship is perfect except for when you're upset, they have absolutely no way to make you feel better and often make you feel worse, the relationship is deeply flawed. This is not a person who is going to be good for you in any long-term capacity. For Christ's sake, you've noticed this when you've just begun dating. Extrapolate that out into the future and consider how this person is going to treat you when you're in a crisis. Essentially, they fucked up when you've just tripped and fallen. What happens when you figuratively get pushed down a flight of stairs and ran over by a Honda Civic? Yes, there is a certain level of expectation and responsibility for communicating your needs in a relationship, but there are also bare minimum expectations that aren't out of bounds, and if their response to you being upset in the beginning of your relationship is to stare at you like a Rubik's Cube, that is a red flag. A flashing red flag if you get upset and then they get upset at you, and that flashing red flag is on fire if it happens at all, let alone within the initial stages of you dating. This is known as the honeymoon period, and someone who gives a flying flapjack about keeping you in their life is not going to go all criminally ranged on you within the first two months. Remember, if they are repeatedly upsetting you, it is only going to get worse from here. I feel like this ties perfectly into rule number three, he cannot be a mean little prick that should be pushed in front of a moving bus. I oopsie back into he him pronouns for obvious reasons, and while what I'm about to say may sound crazy, the people you date are supposed to be nice to you. Sure, you can make up a thousand and one reasons as why they aren't being nice to you, but no matter their tragic backstory, the person you you are giving access to your life in a romantic or social context should treat you well. They should be a positive influence on your life, and if they're constantly saying or giving you the impression that you are too sensitive, that is only because they don't want to be held remotely accountable for their actions. They want an incredibly soft target, and if they can convince you that it's your reaction to the heinous things they're saying to you that's the real problem, even worse if they can gaslight you into thinking that there isn't a problem at all, then they can either A, continue to raise their self-esteem while lowering yours to subterranean levels, or B, make you half as miserable as they are to be around on a good day, and if he's extremely successful, make you defend him to your friends and family, which to your loved ones looks like a possum hissing in front of a burning pile of garbage. I feel like this is a good moment to say that if your family isn't trash, please give them some credibility in their commentary on your romantic interests. This goes doubly so for your friends. Their interpretations of your romantic entanglements can often be less biased as they're not in the eye of the storm. And sometimes the issues are so large you have to have a little distance just to see the extent. Moving on to rule number four, and a really important one for the alt-fashion inclined, any romantic interest had better support your weird little hobbies. Whether that be fashion-related or some other method of summoning dopamine that won't get you arrested, if your romantic partner is not cool with your incredibly harmless interests, 
they are not to be endured. They are to be chucked into the ocean, preferably at some distance from land, and definitely with a life jacket because hobbies are hard to continue in prison. Look, I'm not saying that they have to get dressed up with you or fully engage in whatever hobby makes your brain go burr, but if they for even a moment give you an ounce of aren't you too old for blank, or even give you a hint that they think your hobby is stupid and not worthwhile, then you either need to A, push them out of a moving car at speed, or B, proceed with A and then throw your car in reverse. And all jokes aside for a moment, what may seem like harmless criticism of your hobbies now is at its core a de evaluation of what makes you happy. They have already established that they have no respect for your joy in life in an early stage. Imagine how that's going to extrapolate on any of your pursuits in life at a later date. And then consider if you want someone who can't even support you in the little things around for large life events. I would say the answer for anyone with self-preservation and a modicum of respect is no. Which brings us to our final rule for the evening, and I feel like one of the most important, and again, I'm going back to he, him pronouns for obvious freaking reasons, you do not know him. Him until you have seen him angry. I don't care if they're the sweetest person you've ever met when their stress level is at zero. If they go full Jekyll and Hyde on you the moment things get dicey, this is not an acceptable situation. Someone yelling or getting aggressive with you when they are upset is not okay. And again, while I'm sure you can think of a thousand and one reasons why someone going full Jack Nicholson with a hatchet on you is defensible, the types that perform this total personality switch are not losing control so much as they are gauging your reaction to their behavior. You're not immediately leaving that situation in their mind is a green flag for them to turn up the heat. And while you can tell yourself that what happened was predicated on some kind of explainable bit of stimuli that you're hoping to avoid in the future, in reality you're trying to fix the situation by dancing around their behavior is only encouraging them to further push you into a minefield. The metaphorical bombs that you're going to step on are as nonsensical as they are unpredictable. That constant sense of paranoia and unease is only going to build up in your system. And if you stay with them long enough, your mental health is going to make Shelly Duvall in The Shining look like she just came back from the spa after eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. These types usually like to make you feel like you're crazy for being upset with them. You'll be lucky if you don't lose your hair, let alone your mind. So I recommend you be on guard for anyone who goes from sweet little angel baby to honey badger with a hemorrhoid, unless you want to be stressed, unblessed, and bald as the day you were born. Be especially on guard during that honeymoon phase I was talking about, because if they're willing to go full werewolf when they should be minding their P's and Q's, then they either take you as an incredibly soft target, or they're about to use you for target practice. This translates to run, don't walk. You need to treat this relationship like it's a building marked for demolition and get out of there before it comes crumbling down on your head. You would think such things wouldn't need to be said, but far too many of you will push on a door when it says pull, so I'd like to be explicit. I also feel like I have said enough words for one evening. Good luck to all of you on the dating field. This has been Tyler. You've been watching the channel with my fracking name on it. I'd like to thank my patrons for making what you just saw possible. And should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash news for more content that may or not distress you on a spiritual, mental, or moral level. I recommend a strong drink regardless. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time.